Hi, I'm Bill Sargrass, and in this episode, I, I'm going to do a, a quick start guide tutorial uh, for, the, for the Canon EOS system of cameras, the Canon EOS. The, the model that's in my hand is an older model, it's a, uh, it's a T4i, but the features we're going to talk about today in this tutorial are the same um, all the way through the most current models. So let's get started. Who is this video for? Not someone who's a, an extremely you know, high-end experienced photographer. Uh, but someone who is is new to the DSLR uh, or any of the Canon EOS models, uh, who's interested in in perhaps uh, taking advantage of some of the the more uh, sophisticated aspects of a DSLR camera, and and being able to kind of flip it off of the the program auto mode and and get started with some of the more uh, well, let's just say more towards the professional level of photography. So let's dive right in. There are three things that work together to create proper exposure in, in your image. And that is your ISO, which is the, the sensitivity of the sensor. There is the aperture, which is how open the lens is and how much light it allows through. And the shutter speed is how long the iris, the, how long the, the shutter is open to let light through. And those three things work in combination. So uh, a higher shutter speed lets in less light. And if you open, if you have your aperture set at a very large number, since it works kind of like a fraction one over something, so 22 is less than one over four. And then ISO works as you would expect, the higher the number, the more sensitive it is. So these three settings work together to create the proper exposure for your camera. And we're gonna talk about how to how to set the, the different settings on the camera to, uh, to access those different settings in a way to be creative and to, and to move your photography past the point and let the camera do all the work. So let's do that. Um, there is a mode that comes on the camera that is the, uh, it's the program and in, in scene intelligent automatic. Uh, it's the A in the, in the green square, the A mode. This is fully automatic. It does everything for you. Um, it, will, it will set everything. All you have to do is focus or is set your zoom and if you have autofocus on, if you have the autofocus on, it focuses for you as well. Uh, we'll talk about the autofocus and the image stabilization at the end. So fully automatic and let's say that you have been shooting and, and you're, you're like, I've seen some pictures I would really like to do things a little bit differently. Uh, some of my action scenes are a little bit blurry. Some of my portraits are just a little eh, uninteresting. So the next couple of things we're going to talk about will allow you to move towards being more uh, sophisticated in your composition and in, and in your in your pictures. And we're not going to talk about any of the like super program automatic functions. Uh, there's a lot of videos from Canon and other people who talk about all of the the sports mode and the portrait mode and landscape mode and all these all of these super auto functions down here. But we're gonna look at the ones that are moving up more towards the professional level of photography. So the first one is the P mode, the, the program mode. In program mode, you pick your ISO and it's gonna pick a suitable aperture and shutter speed to go with that. And you say, well, what's the difference between that and the fully automatic mode? Because I can, you know, you can put your ISO in auto, so it would be auto ISO, auto aperture, auto shutter speed. The difference is, in this mode, the, the flash won't pop up uh, unless you tell it to pop the flash up. And if you want the flash to pop up in P mode, you have to actually manually release the flash button to get it to pop up. That's, that's the, the, the most significant difference. So if you're taking a picture of street signs at night and that sort of thing, uh, and you don't want the flash to pop up, then you can put it in, in P mode. Uh, P mode is, is good for running around at the party taking pictures, uh, running around, you know, when, when you're not really going for anything particularly creative or particularly action oriented. The next one up we're going to look at is TV mode. And in TV mode, this is their shutter priority mode. This is where you set the shutter speed and you can also set the ISO or you can put the ISO in automatic. And the way you set your ISO is, is by pushing, you know, an ISO button that is somewhere on the screen and you pick the ISO that you want. Um, so once you have set your ISO and you've put it into shutter priority mode, 
Now you set the shutter speed by turning whatever wheel you have that, that controls it on your particular camera. Different cameras have the control wheel in different places. Um, if you have touch screen, you can uh, hit the Q button, which is, uh, will then allow touch screen operation of your uh, shutter speed if you want to do touch screen operation. Uh, my opinion is when you're in shutter mode, it's much easier just to turn whatever wheel operates that and, and get that done. So T mode. Now, why would you use a shutter priority? Why would you pick the shutter speed? This is when you're going to be start thinking creatively as a photographer. Anytime that you're going to try to stop the action, such as in a sporting event, you're going to want a high shutter speed. And the way you're going to manage that and make sure that you always have that is you're going to pick that shutter speed. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're trying to do a long, uh, a long motion capture while the, the camera is on a tripod, maybe you want to get a blurry effect of, of running water or uh, blurry lines of automobiles as they drive down the street, those kinds of things, you're going to want a very slow shutter speed. And again, you're going to set that using your shutter priority and then uh, let the camera find an aperture that is suitable for that. So uh, set your ISO and you can put your ISO on auto, pick a shutter speed, or you can pick the ISO. The, the next to last thing we'll talk about is ISO settings. Um, so then we have the next is aperture priority. Why would you select the aperture and let the camera pick the other settings? Why would you set aperture? There are uh, a, a style of, photo of portrait photography where we want a very blurry background, and we achieve that by using a very, very open, wide open aperture. That would be an aperture that has a low number, like a 2.8 or a 3.5 or whatever you have, the lowest on your, on your lens. If you have a 1.8 or a 1.4 lens, you probably aren't watching this tutorial, but those will give you a very, very shallow depth of field, where depth of field is, is a function of the lens focal length, the distance to the subject, and how open that lens is. So by setting your aperture very low, and again, once you have put it on um, aperture priority mode, the wheel will allow you to, to turn the aperture down or up as you, as you wish. So a very shallow depth of field with a blurry background is one application of using aperture priority. And the other is if you want a lot of things to be in focus. If you were trying to take a picture uh, down the table of, of holiday decorations, you may want as much in focus as you can and so you would set your, your aperture up to a larger number, 11, 22, whatever is a larger number on your lens, and that will give you a deeper depth of field. More things will be in focus. As the aperture number goes up, the amount of light that comes in goes down, and that's gonna make your shutter speed go down. So at some point, if you're shooting indoors, you're gonna to need to put it on a tripod and, and get that you know, steady picture if you're trying to get a deep depth of field. The last professional setting is manual. And in manual mode, you have control over and are required to set the aperture, the shutter speed, and potentially the ISO as well. Uh, you can put the, the camera in manual mode and then set your ISO to automatic. And if you do that, it will try to find a ISO that matches the aperture shutter speed combination. And if you, if you manage to do that, and it, it, will, it will allow you to set the other two. Um, switching between which thing the wheel controls is uh, a matter of finding the button on your camera that, that switches it over. On this camera, it's the AV button, and it switches it over. So the, now the wheel is controlling aperture, and if I release that button, the wheel is controlling shutter speed. So you have access to, to quickly set whatever you want on either uh, on either setting. Um, so those are the, the, the modes that will take you from just pointing and pushing the button and shooting, then moving you closer towards giving you more control over what the camera is going to do. Let's talk about ISO for a moment. Uh, why would you not just put it on automatic and let it run, let it do its thing? The camera is going to have a native ISO, and, and you can look that up on what, what your camera's native ISO is. Off of that native point, the camera's processor is going to process the, the data that's coming in, 
and try to, to make the picture clear. So if you increase the sensitivity by raising the ISO number and you have increased it past your, your, your native sensor ISO setting, the processor is going to do its best to interpret the light that's coming through the lens and make sense of it. In, in doing this, uh, the higher the ISO, the more the processor has to work. And, and the more the processor works, the more uh, little variances from pixel to pixel uh, are, are going to be noticeable. And, and it, is, it is obvious at a high ISO that there is some noise that is introduced by the high ISO. So you're going to want to manage that in most cases to the, the lowest ISO you can use in order to get the shutter speed and aperture combination that you want. Two other things that are lens settings. One is, is the autofocus setting and the other is image stabilization. And uh, autofocus is very clearly on or off. It's going to determine whether holding the shutter button halfway down causes the lens to focus for you or, or if it doesn't. Cases when you would turn autofocus off is if you're trying to do something particularly complicated with the focusing and you, you just can't get the autofocus to do it. You would then at that point turn autofocus off and use the focus ring on the lens to, and to manually focus the, the camera. Image stabilization works off of a, a, a sort of a gyroscopic somehow sensor uh, accelerometer. The, the gist of it is when you move the, the lens in, a, in, a, in kind of a vibrating motion, the image stabilization kicks in and stabilizes that so that the, the slight motion of the camera is corrected. Now if the camera is perfectly still and the, the subject is moving, image stabilization is not going to do anything for that. But if the camera is, is vibrating slightly or if your hands are shaking slightly or you're trying to uh, move the camera with the, the subject, image stabilization is going to do its best to sort of stabilize that out. So when would you want image stabilization off? I actually googled this one time and I found a particular case that was like, well, I'll never do that. And it was something where if you were putting your camera on a tripod and it was going to be uh, open exposure for a really, really long time and if, and it was, there, was, there were cases when they suggested turning auto image stabilization off. All right, that's all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment. If you have a question, leave that as well. Uh, sign up for notifications, subscribe to the channel. I, I do, besides the tutorial videos, I also do an occasional life lesson or motivational video. Um, I actually do more of those than I do tutorials uh, and also do some other odd things on the side, uh, including some occasional science videos. Um, thank you for watching, and once again, that's all for this episode. I will see you in the next one.